Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Crusader Kings 2, the Byzantine Empire. And as we ended off with the last episode, my empire is continuing to grow, and it is currently the largest empire in the world, or at least the portion of the world that this game is set in. We have more territories overall than the Abbasids, however they have more troops by about 3,000. They can raise about 21 to 22,000 troops, we can raise about 18,000. So that is definitely a problem. The good news is the Abbasid Caliph is an old man who will most likely die any day now. He's 57. His heir is positively predisposed toward me and has a lot of problems on his own. So they're not going to be in a position of strength, hopefully, for a while. And the Caliph, who is ambitious, is being succeeded by a son who is craven, proud, and lustful. So not as quite a problem. He's probably going to have a ton of kids, too, because he's a thrifty clerk and he's lustful. So that's the situation we find ourselves in. We have my 2,000 retinue. We've already declared war on all of these people, so they're, we're at peace with all of them. So I'm gonna send my retinue back home, and I'm gonna consider going to war with Bulgaria. They can only raise about 4,000 troops. So, and unlike my previous wars, I think I might, since all of my vassals are now okay with me except for my local vassals, I might use vassal troops to fight that war. Just to kind of pad the region around Thrace and my capital, I think that would be a good idea. And then once these truces expire here, I'll come and take over the rest of these areas as well. Although I feel kind of bad about taking out Armenia now because the Safarids are on their case and I'd rather have Armenia here honestly an orthodox power even if they are a heresy of orthodox than more Sunnis. The Abbasids as I mentioned Constantinos has been elected of Amalfi what? How do you elect? I'm well you're at least you're Greek orthodox I need to fix this. I need to make sure that Amalfi at some point becomes a barony. In fact, can I stand to lose the prestige by doing it now and just getting rid of this guy? It will lower... No, 20, 20, that's a lot of opinion lowering. That is quite a bit of opinion lowering. So, I don't think that's a good idea. We're building a spy network in Nicomedia, and we're still trying to fabricate a claim on the Duchy of Nicaea. You know, I have amazing state diplomacy. 35. Now, I don't know if it's my personal diplomacy or state diplomacy that determines, or my diplomat's diplomacy that determines how this works, but this fool here in Bulgaria, who has le way less diplomacy than I do, he's been able to fabricate like three claims since we've started playing. So I'm not sure what the deal is there, but he's who I'm going after first, so I'm going to kill that guy. I don't like him at all. See how everybody's doing. Oh, you know what? I believe there's a way in the game to categorize you know, where, like, what goes in here, what goes in here, and what pops up as a separate window. And I want to follow certain characters, like Anastasia, for example. I think I can select her somewhere as someone worth following. Where do I do that? I thought there's a the button that you can click that... Oh, here we go. You're a person of special interest. Okay, another person of special interest, as soon as it finishes saving, is Tolstoy. Since, since he is not technically in my dynasty anymore, well, we probably aren't following him closely. So let's look at Tolstoy and Anastasia. All right, so by going to Anastasia, she currently does have an heir, which is great. She's holding a summer fair. Unfunny church, okay. She's a mountain expert and an aggressive leader. She's she's really good, but not that good at martial anymore. We have other guys in the empire who are a lot better. Okay, my troops have made it. So, do we want this one, which makes more tactical sense, or this one? 34, 26, this one's worth a lot more money, and it's his power center, so we can really hurt him. I'm sure the rest of Bulgaria will come into the war as well. 
I am not too worried about it. And now we have an independence faction, the Dew of Amalfi, the new one. We're going to have to really do something about this guy. His heir is the Strategos of... Oh, isn't he the former guy? I don't even know, but he likes me a lot. I just have to figure out some way of turning Amalfi into a barony so that I can utilize it in the way that I'm supposed to utilize it. These Lord Mayors are kind of a pain, and they want independence. It feels like everyone is trying to trump me. My huntsmen killed more prey than I, my counselors found a better solution to the rebellious peasants than mine, and I started to feel that everyone was better than me, no matter what. I can get the trait kind or envious. Envious gives me intrigue plus two, diplomacy minus one. No, I need the diplomacy better. So I'll be kind, and that's okay. All right, let's see. Fortune favors the bold. Oh, I cannot declare war on you. That's right, because you're the... Alright, so I want Strymon. There it is. Okay. We are now at war with Bulgaria. Let's do our usual raising of the Varangian Guard. Personal levies will be fine, too. Oh, by the way, can I have more retinue? No, I cannot. Alright, that's fine. Get the Varangian Guard up here. And let's put all them together. That'll be my main army. We'll meet up here. In the meantime, little girl, will you help me with some troops? Why, thank you. Wow, you don't have very many, though. Let's go to Raugia. And you... None of you guys really have that many troops, do you? Or maybe it's just because you don't like me very much. I'm really not sure how that works. But I'm going to raise troops from everybody here in the west. I'm going to leave the east alone for right now. Okay. That should be everybody. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So all these guys... Well, no. Oh, no, no. Yikes. Alright. You guys will go to Epiros, and you two will meet them there. Frankly, my vassals do not supply me with very many troops. I am much stronger. I mean, obviously, they have more troops than what they're providing to me. They have their own personal troops. But I would expect a bit more from them. But we're all meeting up here. Oh, let's take a moment to look at this. Princess Yikolet lacks a guardian. What is she good at? So far, she's only really good at Marshall. Okay, well... Yikolet, I kind of want to marry off to, to get an alliance with somebody worth having, so I should have someone educate her who has good qualities in that respect. Or probably, well, I guess that doesn't really matter. Yeah, if I'm going to marry her off, actually, it's probably a good idea to give her somebody whose opinion of me I would like to raise. It's a powerful duke. And before I started recording, I looked at my country, my empire. And I decided who was the most powerful so that I can determine who I need to keep happy with me. Now, the number one most powerful person in the Empire after myself is the Duke of Sicily. As we all probably know, he's very ambitious. Then there's Nicaea, Achaea, Thessalonica, and Samos. Now, Nicaea, I'm going to be shutting him down pretty soon, taking his lands. Achaea is a problem. He tried to rebel once already. So... Let's see where... Let's go with rank. <laughs> Doge of Amalfi, sure. Let's see where the Dew of Sicily is. I know it kind of seems like I'm giving her over to him as a hostage. He's not here. Where, where is this guy? I can't... Is he somehow outside of my authority? No, here he is. Dew of Sicily. Actually, he loves me. What? Oh, well then, screw that. What's next? Well, I'm not getting rid of Nikea. Achaea. There he is. He is a charismatic negotiator. He's an impaler. Yikes. Roth, diligent, honest, cynical, paranoid, and arbitrary. Okay. Yikolet can go with you. And then we have Zinger. 
Do I have enough space left to educate him myself? Well, no. Zinger, you also, as a young twin, are not particularly good at anything yet. So, who shall educate you? I think I want you to stay in my court. So I want someone who a great eminence would be a good choice for you. But it has to be someone whose culture is Greek, and she's Castilian. The Dew of Dioclea. He's ambitious. Hmm. Will he make you ambitious? I'm not sure how that works. But a great eminence would be good to have in the family. How about you, the Countess of Kelot? You're a falconer. That's neat. Gluttonous, proud, craven. They're both ambitious. They're both craven. He's stressed. I guess he's a do. It's better to keep him happy with me. So he can raise you, Zinger, and hopefully you will become a great eminence just like him. All right. Back to the war. Like usual, I'm probably just going to try to destroy their armies first. Tip is definitely not leading the battle. A little girl... I will lose Diplomacy of 5. No, I'll let her rot. Unfortunately, I will go in and release her in just a moment. Dorotheos. Con oh yeah, let's get the Dew of Sicily killed. That's a good idea. And the Dew of Athens. All these guys are powerful, and if they fall on the field of battle, I will not be too worried about that. Alright, and we're going to go to our prison, and we're going to release that sweet little girl. You two can stay. Alright. So, there's the Bulgarian army. You guys can get together. Who should you be led by? Anastasia. The mayor of somewhere. And the Dew of Armeniacon. Okay, perfect. And you guys can go actually take the province that we're trying to conquer. You can meet them there. Excellent. Now I must have troops somewhere because there we go. They need to be disbanded. Okay. I think that's it as far as troops. I'm already at 40% war score. The Bulgarians are not having a good day. Their lar second largest army is here. If we take them out, that should be a good time. So this was a pretty easy war. I was a little bit worried it might threaten my power, but it doesn't seem to have done so. And we are easily, easily defeating them. So unless they have a, a large army hidden around here in the fog of war, we don't have much to worry about. We have, Our buildings have already completed. Anything new that I need? Militia training grounds, stables, barracks, keep, keep, yes. Okay, and Incestos, I believe, is my third Thracian county. Yes, we will do a militia training ground. Okay, excellent. Didn't spend too much money, but are doing a lot of good things to our lands. The Bulgarians are all split up, so we're just going to continue sieging them. Although the quicker we can defeat them, the better, because it'll keep my dues and counts and all of that, my vassals, happy with me, which is something that obviously I want to do. We've just taken their capital, which is fun. It's not a good day for the Bulgarians. I wish in this game you could take more than one province at a time, like Europa Universalis, where if you get a high war score, you can pretty much make whatever demand you want, although there is a penalty to demanding too much. No, we're going to wait this one out. We don't have enough troops to really make it work. But we are at 65% war score. Probably not enough yet to ask them for help or to give up the land to us. But considering this is my first war against a major power, I think it's going quite well. I'm a little worried about Italy because they desire Brindisian. Probably not the best place to put Tolstoy, my, my son, because he's going to be constantly under attack. But... I wonder if there's a way I can give him more power, actually. No, not without... Oh, the Duchy of Apulia. Oh, well, yeah, but then we'd have to go to war with the Carlings. It's never a good idea to do that. 
you know, I was just wondering, is there anybody in my court currently who is not orthodox? It'd probably be someone who doesn't like me very much. Like you. No, you are orthodox. A daughter was born to Prince Tip. Another daughter. Look at that. So who is our next name here? Okay. Welcome to the family. Desdemona. Desdemona Aurelius. Unfortunately, neither one of you, neither Shadyaback or you, have been born in the purple. But I guess that's okay. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with women ascending to the throne, but it does give them a morale penalty and hurts diplomacy, so... You know, it might be a good idea for him to have a son once he becomes emperor. That way they'll be born in the purple, they'll have higher prestige, and it'll be easier to rule. Patience is a virtue, but sometimes it gets on my nerves. My daughter Kreftwer never loses her temper, always waiting patiently for a chance to retaliate. So this will give her prestige and give me intrigue, but everybody will start hating her. And this will give her intrigue and prestige... Yeah, let's do it. She's patient. I like it. Alright, so we're in good shape. And we just gotta keep taking territories in order to make sure that we're able to fight against the Abbasids when they decide to come calling. And I want them to declare war on me because I can. it's easier to defend than it is to attack. And I'll get a lot of money from it if I win. They'll have to pay me quite a bit. And at that point, they're really weakened. So if I'm strong at the end of that, I can immediately counter declare war on them. And that will be a wonderful thing. Let's storm that. And he's willing to give up. Oh, wait, no. The King of Italy. We propose that the Prince of Italy and this random Muslim courtier of mine get married. She has a weak claim on the bishopric of Scythium. But other than that, there's not much really going for her. Sure. Why not? You, that doesn't even make sense, but... Maybe he just fell in love with her. I guess that happens. So we appear to be getting the upper hand here against the Bulgarians, but... What a slow process. What a slow process. Okay, let's storm that. We still haven't even managed to take this one yet. We're just kind of sitting here. Okay. Let's go down here. How long is this going to take? Well, they do have a lot of defenders. Maybe with these guys helping, it'll go faster. I'll just do that. We'll have them come here. There we go. And that was all it took. He wants to Give me the county. Well, thank you. The Byzantine-Bulgarian de jure war over Strymon has ended. Basilius Marcus II of the Byzantine Empire has won. Fantastic. Now let's disband everybody. Except my retinue. And, okay. So, I own it. While pondering over the guest list for the banquet, I wondered if I should invite one of my friends. Of course. Why wouldn't you? Invite your friends. That's not even a question. Why wouldn't you? Alright. Rashka. Oh, wow. Now we like each other a lot more. Mayor. No, Baron Theokistos. Alright, you Rashka guy. Can we declare war on you? Does your claim on Rashka? Okay. Let's go with the retinue, and I guess we can rehire the Varangian guard. But other than that, I think we'll just go with that. We're not going to raise my vassal levies. Okay, Dorotheos, of course, the Duke of Sicily, of course, and Anastasia. They are my three great generals. Okay, nothing really new here. Someone who's watching who knows the game better than I do, please let me know. I want anything that happens to Anastasia and Tolstoy to pop up as a window, not up here. Because I basically ignore this stuff up here. And also let me know if there's stuff up here that I shouldn't ignore and that I should move to popping up as a window. Because those are the only things really that I'm going to pay attention to. Let's see how those factions are doing. 
They're both pretty weak. The Lower Crown Authority faction, that's the Dew of the Aegean Islands. I don't want to give him any money. I don't have that much money. The Independence faction is very weak. I'll let them be. You know what? I probably can't march through Bulgaria, can I? Oh, I can. Okay, cool. So this, this war was actually beneficial for us in two ways. One, it gave us more land, of course. But two, it kind of stuck a poker in the eye of this prince of Bulgaria who's trying to get all these claims to my land. His dad, Vladimir, seems to be all right. Or actually, his, his brother, Vladimir, the king of Bulgaria, seems to be an all right guy. But this prince is a big pain. So I'm glad that I can cause him a little bit of difficulty. And still nothing. I had this great diplomatic power and... This Nicene guy is just impervious. Honestly, 10 episodes from now, we'll still be trying to fabricate a claim. Now, imagine how hard it is to fabricate a claim on Rome if Nicaea takes this long. It's ridiculous. Oh, they don't have very many defenders. We can just go ahead and storm. Three, two, one, contact. Excellent. I do want to keep at least a thousand gold in there for when Tip secedes because I want him to be able to hire mercenaries or buy people off right away to solidify his rule. But 692 is pretty decent. And Tip has a lot of prestige, so I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. Rashka is pretty weak, I have to say. We are not having too much trouble with them. I guess next we can declare war on... What is this, Croatia? Yeah. And who are you? You must be Serbia. No, Slavonia. Okay. Interesting. Oh, look at you. Who are you? Rashka, yeah. Come and attack me. Do your best. I'm eager to see what you're able to pull off. Martha died a natural death at age 74. Well, that does happen. It doesn't look like he's even coming for me. It looks like he's trying to get around me. Oh, Rashka. Oh, I get it. He's trying to take his land back. I don't think so, buddy. And he's going to stop, of course. Oh, I get it. Let's just see what he's able to do. Can we enforce... Nope. Okay. 24 June. 15 June. We have a lot of people here. Let's go back. Okay, we're going to play this little dancing game. A daughter was born to Zedislav Mostachov and Princess Mayuki. Alright, another daughter. We're, we seem to be having plenty of those. Next we have... Oh my. Well... This person didn't give me a female name, so he did suggest Lord Person Man, so we're going to go with Lady. Lady Person Man. Okay. And, a, oh, twin daughters. My goodness. We have a lot of twins in this family. Okay, next we have Niasha. Oops. Niasha. Excellent. All right, welcome to the family. And now that Mayuki Miyuki has two kids, I think we might go ahead and land her. Because there's no reason not to. She's, well, I mean, she is a threat to the throne, but now that Tip has two children of his own, the succession's a little bit more. Are you going to get out in time? One August, three August. Oh, come on. God, this is so stupid. 14 August, 12 August. Seriously, man. How annoying. 31 August, 25. Okay. Ooh. My daughter Kreftward does her homework and is always on time for her lessons. She has a good mentor. Oh, great. She'll get... Oh, awesome. She's going to get some good stats from that. You, sir, are annoying. 
split in half. Okay, you guys go here. No, not both of you. Just one of you. You go here. There we go. Okay, now let's join them quickly. The Bulgarian populace in Strymon has embraced the Greek culture. Wow, that didn't take long at all. We just took that place. That's fantastic. Even with only half my army, we're still beating them. Rashka. You're so silly. And they're pretty much finished. And we've won this war. And he's going to give me what I want. Basilius Marcus the Wise has usurped the title County of Rashka from Duke Multimir the Cruel. The Byzantine Rashkin de Jure War over Rashka has ended. Basilius Marcus II, the Byzantine Empire, has won. Fantastic. So now let's bring everybody back together and declare war on Croatia. We want Zaklumia. All right. Let's go over there. And we now have too many lands. So, actually, perfect. I happen to have a daughter who has two lovely daughters of her own. Miyuki, how would you like to be the Count of Racia? There you are. All right. So that, that arm of the family is going to go on and do its own things, which is fantastic. And we are going to move on and conquer Croatia, or part of it, anyway. And you'll notice I don't have to wait or anything. It's because if I'm just using my retinue and my mercenary troops, they can they could be basically fighting all the time. Okay, Sestos, we're ready for another improvement. How about a barracks? It's pretty cheap, sure. And Constantinople, the problem with Constantinople is the improvements are quite expensive. Yeah, I've got 500 for the Catacrap Training Ground. Light Cavalry. They're both about the same price. Okay. And we're down now to 400 gold, so I think we need to chill out a bit and save money. Because Marcus is not going to live forever. He's an old man. And we inherited the Duchy of Dalmatia and all other titles. Fantastic. Let's stop for a minute there. Because we need to give those away right quick. County of Diodoros, County of Strymon, okay, so just Diodor Diodora and the Duchy. Okay. So, oh, I can have an ambition. Oh, no, I, oh, I can't. So who can I give that to? Let's see. You know, I'd like to weaken one of my vassals' armies. So if I could take someone away from them who's really good, like Thessal... So this would be, she's the Magistros of Thessalonica, so if I took her, the Dew of Thessalonica would have a poor Magistros. He's my Magistros. Trebizond. Dioclea. Let's see. Magistros. Crete. No. That's that's Anastasia. Where's the Magistros of Sicily? Goodness. He must have he must not have a very good Magistros. Goodness. There must be an easier way to find this out. We could go down to Sicily. And we could look at his... Would it be court? Yeah, he's court. Okay, I think they have a little thingy in front of their head if they're... No, I guess not. Oh, here we go. Mysticos. Okay, only the Mysticos. So then one of the vassals must be the... Here we go. So you are, who are you? You're the Sacalarios, and you don't like me at all. Well, I'm not going to give you a county then. Yeah, whatever. Let's just let's just find somebody who has good skills with. I want someone who's a strong military person, but also a strong. So you're the mayor of Pergamon, and you're amb you're ambitious though. Well, you're oh god, everybody's ambitious. You're not ambitious. Nicorette. <laughs> named after a, named after the gum. 
You're Stratagos. You were actually perfect for this case. You were both strong and a good administrator. All right. You can be the Count Tess of Diadora. Actually, Duchy. Yeah, County of Spalathos. Is that is that right? I'm not sure I understand how this works, to be honest. Okay. So now, she should have both the county. Yeah, okay, we're good. We are good, ladies and gentlemen. And we are just still at war with Croatia, and they do have more defenders than one-tenth of my attacking force, so we're just going to hold out for a bit. We can speed it up a little bit because the episode has been going a little long. I want to wait till this war is over before I end the episode. So, the problem, of course, is when things are going by this fast, we could Marcus could die, something crazy can happen. But we are at the beginning of the year of our Lord, 893. We've built a keep in Gallipoli. We seem to be raising money quite well. Militia training ground. It's pretty cheap. Barracks. Let's go with the barracks. Okay, the Bishop of Antiochos has passed. We need to get Wade a new guardian. Wade is almost an adult, though, so there's not... So basically we can give him to anybody at this point, just to make them happy with us. Who's someone powerful? The Dew of Aegean Islands. Let's make you happy with us. There you go. Because it's only, it's only a year. They're not going to really have too much effect on his personality at this point. And Edessa has been converted to orthodoxy. That is fantastic. And we are slowly but surely making progress here against Croatia. It is taking a while. You know what I think I'm going to do is when Marcus dies and Tip ascends, if anybody is... I'm going to... If anybody doesn't like me very much, like a powerful count, I'm going to make them a duchy. Not only to increase Tip's prestige, but also to ensure that for at least the life of that duke, they are super loyal to Tip. I'll make sure it's a younger younger people that I give these to. So that way he can be assured, at least early in his reign, of having strong vassals that support him. Dr. Quacksalver, you're a naive appeaser. Wade is a detached priest. Okay, did I keep that? Did I keep that bishopric? No, I gave it away, didn't I? All right, well, you two are just going to sit tight until I have stuff to give to you. Quacksalver. Wow, you have a lot of stuff. You're a naive appeaser. You're twin. Quick. Born in the purple. Charitable. Kind. Just. Chaste. Oh, you're chaste. We're probably not going to get a lot of kids out of you. But we could marry you. Who is someone powerful? Queen of Cornwall. Duchess of Moravia actually is a good choice, but she's only three years old. Probably not the best idea. Countess of Melitine. No. They're, they're local. Baroness of Zoldern. She's German. So no one no one really of any of any note is available for you, Dr. Quacksalver. And you don't want to wait 13 years to marry the Duchess of Moravia. The Duchess of Tyrol is eight. You'd have to wait quite a while, but it would give us an alliance with the Kingdom of Italy, would it? No, just the Duchess of Tyrol. Still, though. She's... Eh, it would take eight years. You would be in your 20s. Probably not a good idea. Let's just find someone who's worthwhile to us to have in court. Any good diplomats? Oh, you're pretty good. You're Croatian. And you are you not zealous? Oh, you're, you're 26 diplomacy? Okay. We'll marry you, and we'll have a good diplomat in our court. Of course, we have to make sure she's orthodox soon. Okay, we can storm. Croatia's really holding out. Okay, she's in my court now, so how about you become orthodox? Excellent. Oh, Wade. Well, Wade, we're not marrying you because you're going into a life of the church as soon as I get a, a bishopric or something that I could give you. 
So then I'll have my children in all aspects of the world. And she's orthodox now. Fantastic. So I have a backup diplomat if my main one becomes incapacitated or otherwise distressed. We're at 29% war score. This episode's going to go extra long. These Croatians are tough customers. It is almost halfway through 893 now. Marcus is still kicking at the age of 53 years old. Is the Caliph still kicking as well? He sure is. Look at you, buddy. 60 years old. Tolstoy, how you doing? Do you have a kid yet? You do. You have a daughter. Okay, what, what's this? You should invest in a technological advance. Okay. Noble customs, definitely. Makes my nobles happier with me. Which one do I want here? Improved castle infrastructure? That would unlock barracks for training grounds. Definitely that's a good one for my personal domains. This makes better defenses, not that important really. But it gives me a better, better keep. Construction, yeah. I can't do anything with military organization, so I'm going to wait until I can. I guess improve keeps. And we'll wait on the rest. Okay, fantastic. And we've conquered here. Where else can we go? So Croatia is certainly taking a long time to defeat. And something came up and then disappeared. My daughter Kreftwer hardly eats anything for fear of turning fat. Temperance is a virtue. Kreftwer is turning out quite well. Okay. We're going to have to wait this one out as well. See what else is going on in the world here. Italy, of course, is very powerful. All of the, the Francias and Lotharingia are all Carlings. The Umayyads pretty much own Spain, but Asturias is kicking it. The Iconoclast Heresy has appealed, appeared in the province of Atalea. Horrible. I don't even know where that is. My truces haven't expired yet. Population of Drepanon has been converted to the Orthodox faith. That's fantastic. Next Bulgarian province we'll take will be this one. So we'll have this nice little chunk here. We're almost ready to take this entire county, or duchy, I should say. Over here we have Ruthenia, Gordariki, Perm, Yagbuid. The Safarids are very powerful. The Abbasids have taken out Medina, so they are incredibly powerful. And things are going to be pretty tense with them soon. Okay, what's this? A weak claim. East Francia? But basically, wow, no, East Francia is too far away. And I really have to start refreshing, because the Abbasids are going to come calling. They have all of Egypt now. They have all of the Arabian Peninsula. They have most of the Holy Land. Duchess. Oh, we have a Duchess? Really? Let her rot. And let's see if we can get some money for her. I need to pay attention to who my prisoners are. A 10 gold? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. And I'm still Marcus the Wise. Marcus the Slow Seizure. We're in pause. Don't want to do that, certainly. Okay, so I'm glad that Tolstoy has an heir. That is very helpful to me. Although he's going to have his working out for him if Italy decides to attack. We have, we have enough strength to fight off Italy, but I just don't want anything nasty to happen to Tolstoy. He should have more kids. He definitely should have a son just to solidify things. And my vassals are all very happy with me, so that's good. Because I haven't been using their troops. I've been using my own to win my wars. One of the locals of Nicomedia might be corrupt. Then use it as you see fit. Excellent. Try to silence me by sending some thugs to kill me. Oh, jeez. I don't want Tolstoy to get killed. I will go ahead and spread the rumor about his corruption. Yeah, do so, please. I didn't think about that. Using Tolstoy as my mysticos is a good way to get him killed. Which I don't want. Sestos. Victory. Uh, I don't want to build fortification. Uh, it's only 70 gold. Why not? 
Come on, guys. Alright, Storm. We're at 68% war score. Okay. 83, and he's going to surrender. Thank goodness, man. Took you forever. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I will move my troops out of here so I can disband them. And I hope that you're enjoying these videos. By all means, continue leaving comments. Continue leaving suggestions. I obviously am not an expert at this game. I don't know. I'm good at what I'm good at. But I don't know some of the deeper elements that perhaps could be helping me achieve what I want to achieve. For example, Nicaea. I've been trying to forge a claim for years now in game and have not been able to succeed in that so any help you can give me along the lines of that would be most appreciated like for example i know i can take away ducal titles without any problem my vassals won't care but if i do that if i take away the ducal title and become the duke of nicaea can i then take away county titles without my vassals caring or will they will they be pissed that's the kind of stuff i need to know so let me know in the comments and have a good one everyone